Hello, I'm Rick Stivers with Young Martin's Reels, and today we're going to venture a little bit different from where we have been in the past. Uh, most everything that we've done has been a 60, 50, 60, 70 year old reel. Well, this reel is a little bit newer than that. Um, I believe these were either made in the 80s and 90s. This is a Pen 450 SSG. Um, that uh, SS, I used to think that stood for stainless steel, and it doesn't. It stands for uh, skirted spool and gold. That's a skirted spool gold reel. So anyway, this reel was recently serviced by me uh, at the very beginning of when I first started redoing these reels. Uh, I sat down to start rebuilding and refurbishing my reels to get them ready to f go fishing. And that's when I first started to get the first inklings of creating Young Martin's reels. And but I, at that time I wasn't shooting any videos or anything. I was just you know trying to figure out how my dad used to take these reels apart and put them back together. So this was one of the first ones that I had done. And one of the things that I did notice was that it was missing this button, this end cap right here. And I knew that that meant that this reel was going to be open to the elements and easy for things to get inside. So um, I, f I went ahead, serviced it, put it on a rod, and hung it up in the garage, and it sat there for a while. Well, not too long ago, I was looking at another pin reel, and I was going to order parts for it. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, that old that pin 450 down in the garage, it needs that end cap on it. I'll go ahead and see if I can get that. So I ordered that from Mystic Parts, and when I did that, I also noticed that it was pretty inexpensive to go ahead and buy the um, drag washers for it. So I went ahead and ordered new drag washers. I think it cost me like an extra three dollars. So I decided, let's go ahead, order the end cap, let's order the drag washers, go back through the reel since it was back in the beginning when you first didn't really know anything about it, except, hey, let's wipe it down and stick some grease in it. And let's take it apart, make sure everything's in it's good, replace the drag washers, although I'm sure that they're probably fine. If you look at this reel, it doesn't look like it's had a lot of abuse and use. So uh, there's probably nothing wrong with the drag washers, but it three dollars to put a brand new set in uh if, if the, this, this reel is 20 30 years old and then the odds are pretty good somewhere in the near future they're going to stop selling drag washers for it so it was a good time to go ahead and replace them so let's go ahead tear this reel down take it apart this one should not take long it's a, not like the ones where you know i'm trying to figure out how to take it all apart and bust pieces apart and try to repair things inside it. This reel is a perfectly functional reel. Okay, in keeping with my checklist theme, uh, the things that we have checked out about this reel is I was able to find the schematic for it. The reel is complete. The only thing, or it is now that I had the button that I ordered, um, there's nothing on the reel that's broken. The reel turns freely and, and smoothly. Does the bail operate? Yes, it does. And it operates smoothly. Does the drag work? Yes, it does. Can it be adjusted? Yes, it can. There you go. And uh, does the handle function smoothly? Yes, it does. Does the anti-reverse work? Yes, it does. It's the uh, instant anti-reverse, and it cannot be turned off. There is no on-off switch for it. We'll run that again at the end to make sure everything still functions like it should. And let's get started taking this thing apart. We're going to start off taking off the spool. There we go. And we'll come back later, take that apart, and replace the drag washers. We're going to go ahead now and remove the handle. And we're going to remove these four screws. All right, with those four screws removed, we can now remove the side cover. The bearing is still there. The bearing's in good shape, but we're gonna go ahead and wipe it out. Wipe out any dust and debris that might be in there which is pretty obvious. It looks like I didn't do that last time around. And it is a shielded bearing, but it is not a sealed bearing. So we're gonna do, put some oil in it. 
and let that soak in. Make sure it's turning freely. And it does. So we'll set that over to the side. Let's make sure there's a shim here on the main gear. We'll need to make sure that we keep track of that. There we go. That's pretty sure that came out. Uh, there's two screws here on the crosswind that uh, have to come out and one of them is hidden even if you rotated it all the way around one of them would still be hidden by the main gear I think. Let's take a look see if I'm wrong. Nope. If I had rotated around they both would have come out. So let's go ahead and take out the main gear. Remove the screws from the crosswind block retainer. All right, with that out, the axle shaft assembly will now come out. Next, remove the crosswind block. Notice that the point is heading towards the foot. And go ahead and remove the crosswind gear. Next, we'll go ahead and remove this screw holding the lock for the nut and that should come out there we go there's the lock out and let's see if we have there we go we have one little fit unscrew the screw or the nut remove that and this will lift out or it should. All right. That come off good. Now we have one, two, three screws holding this in. Notice that the two screws over here head toward point towards the handle, and the one over by itself is over here. Let's go ahead and remove this screw. And I don't think I took this off last time. I might have, but I doubt it. I don't think I was that sure of myself back then. Okay, all three screws are the same. So we can leave those. All right, now we take this cover off. This is your anti-reverse. With that off, they should now rotate both directions. With it installed, it should only rotate in one direction, which is true. That's exactly what's happening. Okay, now this is greased and it should not be greased. That should be dry. So we'll be working on taking that and cleaning it up. And there's the last bit out. And we'll clean this up. All right, we're going to pause for a second. Because this piece is a uh, friction fit, it's supposed to be kept dry. Uh, it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of lubricant, but not so much that it's going to cause it to slip inside. Um, so if you can clean it a little bit, that's fine. Do not lubricate it. You can put a little grease on it and wipe it right back off. That's fine. There. That's the way that's supposed to work. If this gets too much lubricant on it, it will cease to function. All right. There we go. That's how that all fits together. And we are ready to begin assembly. So we're going to start off by installing our pinion gear. Now what, let's make sure, even though this is not supposed to be lubricated and this is not supposed to be lubricated this bearing is so let's make sure we put some oil on that bearing spin it around a few times get it moving all right 
there's a right way and a wrong way for this to go on you notice this shoulder right here there's a little inset on the inside of this and that slides up against there if you put it around the other way that's not right see how it hits so flip it over make sure that it goes all the way down using that inset yep. There you go. There's the inset. Slide it straight down. There we go. Then let's go ahead and put it in the case. And it won't hurt to take and put a very small amount of grease on the inside of the case right here just to help the bearing slide in and out in case somebody wants to repair it in the future. Make it easier to come in and out now next thing you might want to do is put this on but there is this shim that goes in first okay get that down in the groove that'll help retain and it will also help protect and keep things clean I'll tell you what let's do just to help keep contaminants out let's put a very slight coating of grease right around there slip that collar back on and then give it another really light coating of grease so that when you install this this should seal up against there and it will help keep water and corrosion and dirt out of that anti-reverse Now that should only turn in one direction, and it does. Okay. All right. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and clean out this bearing. Make sure it's clean. All right, that's done. Slip the bearing back inside. And let's go ahead and flood that bearing. Remember, it is not a sealed bearing, it is a shielded bearing. And uh, that will go in there and cause it to lubricate the roller bearings inside. That will help keep it smooth. Next, we're going to put on the crosswind gear put some lubricant in the bottom down below it slip it into place you can go ahead if you want at this point and put some grease on the teeth themselves and I've inspected these they are in great shape this reel looks like it's practically brand new inside and it may be for all I know it may have never been fished with it has been dropped once it's got a, a ding up here on the bale but aside from that I couldn't find any damage to it whatsoever crosswind blocks installed let's come back now and put our rotor back on and it's got these flat spots right here on, on the shaft find the flat spots on there and slide it on take your nut and reinstall it all right drop the locking plate in place make sure to get it lined up with one of the holes Okay, now those are lined up to the hole, so that means I probably over torqued it a little bit. There we go. Line up the hole. Put your screw back in. Looks like I'm going to have to break down today and use the old grease on the tip of the screwdriver technique. 
and it does work 100% every time. It's just a little bit messy. Wipe the excess out of there. Don't need grease down inside that. With that done, we're ready to reinstall the axle shaft. Now, I always oil these. Um, and the only reason I do that is because I find that grease seems to slow the reel down. And uh, I just don't like my reel to feel sluggish. Um, that doesn't mean greasing it is wrong. Lots of people do, especially my mentor um, in these, which is uh, Dennis Kuntz over at Second Chance Tackle. So if you have the desire to grease it, you feel more than happy to do so. I just feel that it slows it down a little bit, so I don't do that. Uh, it, in the long run, I may decide one day I may come back and re-edit every single video I have because I find that I'm not doing well by doing that. So, but for now, I do. Yeah, I'm trying to put it in upside down. For some reason, I thought the point went that way. There we go. Okay. Slide your axle shaft down. Make sure it goes inside the end bearing. Get it lined up. At this point, you're ready to install your retaining plate. And now we have a We've got a screwdriver. We're going to put some grease on it so we're not having to deal with the same issues we did before. Set your screw in place and tighten it down. Okay, that slides it well. Now we're going to come back and work on our main gear. And I've inspected this. This is a beautiful gear. Nice brass on this end. The shaft of it is brass. Um, not real sure why they didn't just go ahead and do that there. Probably expense, but it's really nice looking gear. This brass should hold up for a long time. Well, I'll tell you, I have seen some that those gears right there, the small ones that are brass on this, because that's where all the stress is. When somebody's pulling on a line, that will cause those to shear off. That's probably why they went ahead and went brass there, and the rest are all still aluminum. But, um, yeah, that's, I'm sure that's exactly why those are brass and everything else on there is aluminum. Because that, those are the most likely to fail. If you uh, look at my video on the browning reel you'll see that it failed right there and that's exactly why I was determined that that reel failed because of that all right let's put the main gear in make sure it goes into the bearing make sure that this shim is still here which it is make sure it didn't get wiped off during the cleaning process okay everything else is in there Because this is going to ride on here a little bit. We're going to go ahead and put some grease here just to allow it to slide a little better. Put the side cover on. Clip it in place. Go ahead and put the handle back on. Hold the rotor to tighten it down. Very nice. Okay. Put the end cap on. This is the first time this one's had an end cap in a long time. I don't know where it went to, but it's got it now. All right. That brings us down to doing the spool and putting in the new drag washers. And like I said, it probably doesn't need these drag washers, but at $3, it was an easy buy. 
went ahead and got it done. I decided let's get let's do it all. We're going to take out the spring clip. Keep your finger on it so that it can't shoot out. With that out, we can now take out the drag washer stack. And they look like they've actually had a little bit of use, but not too bad. I mean, they're still very solid. Um, they were probably good for another 20 years, but they're going to get retired. And I'm going to put in some brand new ones. With some, I'm going to lubricate them with some Cal's drag grease washer, a drag grease, drag washer grease. There we go. And get it out eventually. And install these. We'll put a little grease on. We'll rub it in. Put the drag washer inside. Now, We've got a round washer with a key on the inside. It's kind of oblong shape. We're going to put that in next. Then another new drag washer. Set that in. Now we've got this hex shape. Now normally on reels, when you get to this washer, it's got ears on it. Well, instead of ears, this one's got six points because it's a hex shape. Okay, slip it into the hex shape. And we've got one more drag washer to install. Grab the grease into it. Slip it in. Put this last key washer in, and it's time for the spring to go back in. Slip that back into the groove. Drop it onto the axle shaft, rotate it until it falls into place, like so. Reinstall your drag knob. Tighten it down until you can't tighten the knob anymore. And loosen it up. There you go. Nice drag. All right. So there you have it. There's our... I'll hang on to those. Those are in good shape. I might find something else that those can fit into. But for now, those went in here. We're going to... Let's clean this line just a little bit. this line from hanging out of there. I've got a rubber band around there to hold that in place. Okay. Let's put a drop of oil here. 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 And here. Now we can operate this bale back and forth a few times. Work that lubricant in. And that works beautifully. We're going to add a drop of oil right here on the handle. Spin it in. Let it work down into the shaft. That completes the servicing for the pen 450 SSG and um, if you like what you saw here today please hit the like button if you didn't like it go ahead hit by all means hit the dislike button and um, if you'd like to see further videos like this hit the subscribe button let's do a quick run on the checklist 
And yes, we found a schematic for it. The reel is complete. It is completely complete now. Nothing is broken. The reel turns free and the anti-reverse works as advertised. So we have a good functional reel. And uh, good fishing to you. And from Rick Stivers at Young Martin's Reels, fish on.